And Yvette was expressing this in a just really open and generous way. And she had said in, in a moment of vulnerability, like, it's frustrating, man. I do the hashtags, I do what everybody says to do, and I can't seem to crest above 1,000 followers on Instagram. Anybody feel that right now? Guys, please help me welcome Yvette. Yvette, come on up. So as I'm interviewing Yvette for our show, she starts talking about losing potentially the largest job of her career at that time because her social media following wasn't where the manufacturer was expecting. And that's a heartbreaking story. And it's not a story about complaining about the way the system works or doesn't work, how the algorithm favors young, talentless hacks versus <laughs> creators, right? And you guys know, you, you people, spent a lot of time and money learning your craft. Yet there's all these self-taught people out there that are just owning social media. And this wasn't a woe is me tale, like pity me. It was a lightning rod for discussion about what do I need to do to learn to play the game because I'm hella talented. And I, did, did the social media world leave me behind? Am I too old? Have I missed the boat? And Yvette was expressing this in a just really open and generous way. And she had said in, in a moment of vulnerability, like, it's frustrating, man. I do the hashtags, I do what everybody says to do, and I can't seem to crest above 1,000 followers on Instagram. Anybody feel that right now? Like, for some reason, the, the social media gods have not favored you. In a previous life, you had done wrong things, you know? And now it's penance for that crime you committed. And she's like, no matter what, I would go above 1,000 and then below. I was just cresting above and below. And it's almost as if we scripted the, the next part of the story, which is I said, Yvette, here's the problem. I looked at your social media, and fortunate, unfortunately, it's a very noisy landscape. There are a lot of image makers out there, and how are you gonna separate yourself from everybody else? You need to put you into your brand. It's like you can't spell beautiful without you. Be beautiful. And she has to put herself in it. And in sharing the story, something crazy happened. This video got picked up by F Stoppers, Petapixel, and Pasadena Ma Newspaper oh, yeah, Magazine. The, what Pasadena was that? Pasadena Now. Pasadena Now. Yeah. And it kind of went viral. And almost overnight, within a very short time span, Yvette went from 1,000 followers to 2,500 followers, like that. And I saw a person that I was like, I want to work with you. I think there's something here. Let's get to 10,000 followers by the end of the year. So you guys will see the story unfold. Now here's where the controversy begins. <laughs> there's another YouTube creator, um, won't mention his name, but because the story points didn't line up for him, that he started to discredit Yvette, mm -hmm. saying, you know, you can't speak out against manufacturers. Oh, are you, he started questioning your character and the, the whole fabric of the story. And that really got me mad because, and I fired back. I fired back on social media. It's probably not what you're supposed to do, but I did. And I said, you know, I don't know Yvette that well, but I take her for a word. She seems like an honest person with integrity. She didn't plan this. We were just having an organic conversation. So why is it that because that experience doesn't fit within your narrative that somebody else cannot experience that? And, and growing up myself, having been bullied, that really fired me up, right? That really fired me up. It's like, you know, step off. So I'd like to pick up the story from here. See the cliffhanger? It's like, all right. So here's what happened. And I'll give you a little bit of the detail so we can have a real conversation about it, which is Yvette got called by a large camera manufacturer. She was really excited, and she started moving. And then hours later, they called to cancel the gig, and it broke her heart. And the reason why was because they said, you don't have enough followers that typically we like to work with people with, let's say 50,000 followers, and she's far, far from that. Now, people are firing back like, what, is, what are you, are you a professional? Like who starts a job? Who starts working on things without discussing the budget? So let's clear the air a little bit. Yeah. So can you give us a little bit more context to that story so that the non-believers can figure out if this is true or not? Well, I mean, I've been shooting for decades, and you get jobs in all sorts of different ways. 
And when certain companies call and say you're perfect for a job, you just say yes. And when they say, are you available these four days, you know it's a four-day job, and you say yes. And it's like you leave it off. And other times you're asked to bid, which I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of proposals. But it doesn't always, it's not, nobody has a book that says step A, step B, step C, step D must be in this order in order to do something, right? And so we hadn't talked about budget yet, but I was told what I was told, which I just said to you. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't really care about the budget at that moment. I only cared about that they were calling and they were saying I was perfect to do a job and the budget was coming next, and I was just starting to work that out. And 20 minutes later, I, the opportunity went away. And so that's that part of the story. Okay. And it's not atypical, I promise. Um, it, it's just not. Okay, so you guys get that, and there, there are rules to the engagement, and I think your enthusiasm and your passion, like if Apple called me, I'm like, yeah, let's do right. it. <laughs> right, and I would start like, let's clear the aisles, let's, let's get going on this job. Right. And that's kind of what you were going through. Right. So people who don't understand that automatically dismiss the rest of the story because right. it didn't fit within their narrative. But it wasn't even about that anyway. It was it about wasn't. a moment of growth. And that's the only reason why I even shared the story. It came at a crossroads for me. And you guys, we have to have thick skins as freelancers. You're going to lose a lot of jobs. And the more jobs you're going up for and losing and gaining, the more momentum there is, right? And yeah. so if you're, actually getting if you're actually getting opportunities, even if you're losing them, you're getting them, and that's good. But certain jobs, you have to stop and reflect. You know, that's the truth. And others, you just have to keep going and let go and just know it's not a fit and move on. What's interesting about this story is that we're getting hammered from both sides of the aisle. It's really weird. <laughs> Haters. <laughs> so there are the people who are social influencers like, yeah, get over it. Just because you went to the art center and paid whatever your tuition was and you, you don't deserve anything, you entitled little whiny. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was one side of it. Yes. And then they were discrediting the entire story because the narrative didn't line up for them. Not realizing Yvette's been doing this professionally for some of the biggest celebrities in the world. And they just don't even understand that. And then on the other side of it was, man, if we feel your pain, right. we're, we're creators, and what's wrong with social media? Everything is wrong. Right. And so here's the thing, and I hate to say it like in these absolute terms, okay? Trying to fight the internet is a losing game. It really is. And in Gary Vaynerchuk's word, the internet won. Get over it and get yours. Really, that's it. So it's like you are swimming against the tide, and eventually you'll tire, and you'll lose, and you'll drown. Well, and if I can interject one thing, I got a lot of emails and messages and DMs, and people were worried, and people were saying, you know, oh my God, I'm so, I feel so bad for you, and this sucks, and you know, I hate this game, and I got that, and I, I understand that. But I have to push back, and I did take the time to answer every single one of those messages and say something like that this is nothing new. Yeah. Instagram is new, but the quest to become relevant yeah. is not new. And also the quest to um, for companies, large companies that have good budgets to seek icons to shoot or to create content with them as partners is nothing new. Irving Penn shot for Clinique. And Clinique couldn't afford anybody, and a lot of people could have done beautiful work. Okay, not that beautiful, but of course, they could have done a rad, rad job. But they also had the overlay of Irving Penn shoots for us, or Vanity Fair, Annie Leibovitz, Mark Seliger. They're icon shooting icons for an iconic brand. It all works, right? I probably would be able to shoot a lot of the content for Vanity Fair, no problem. And a lot of you guys could, right? But I'm not an icon, so I wouldn't even be considered for that job. That's been going on forever. So, you know, it's just the media platform. Yeah. It's different. There was this other complaint from the old guard. And I, I just want to sit in this moment for a little bit so that you guys understand that we've thought this through <laughs> a little bit. And that they're like, why should we, who've been here, who've earned our right at the table, now have to play this dumb game that the kids are getting involved in? And why do we have to do this social media marketing? This is BS. And then Yvette said something to me. She's like, we've been playing this game since the beginning. 
It was just called something else. Instead of working on your Instagram feed, instead of responding and understanding the algorithm and using their new features and doing stories, what did we have to do? We had to print books, expensive books, and bind them and send them all over the world and pay for it and go to meetings and meet with art buyers and chase the job over and over and over again. And maybe a rep will pick me, the good rep, and maybe they'll find me a gig, right? And so here's what's wonderful and horrible at the same time. The gatekeepers are gone. You don't need them anymore. Here's the bad news. The gatekeepers are gone. Okay? And they're all, like, the doors have opened and nobody's minding the shop. So all the young people who didn't know a world before only the, know the world of now and of the future, they're taking your lunch. So we know this, okay? We know that change is inevitable, but progress, that's a choice. And so you guys, we're here today mostly to help you guys figure out how to get yours, as, inner, as uh, Gary Vaynerchuk has said. Get yours, because it's there for you. You have all the skill, you have the talent, you have the training, you have the experience. Let's channel it, let's help you grow your social following so you can make six figures, barely doing any work, <laughs> really fast. <laughs> can we do that? I think we can do that. Okay, so this is kind of a midway point in the story in that Yvette came on our channel, told her story, and it got picked up all over the place, people reaching out, and as a consequence of that, this is the part that where I say, this is unscripted and it's working out really well. The minute Yvette came out and was vulnerable and true and authentic to her story, authentic, right, authentic to her story, her account blew up. So I think here's what's happening if I can play amateur psychologist here. As creators, we hold on to the perfect image as an idealized version of ourselves. And that version of ourselves is super unrelatable and nobody cares. Mm. So when you open yourself up, you tell your story, that's what people are buying into. Simon Sinek, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So the minute she put herself out there, even though her Instagram feed has not changed a whole lot, her account has more than doubled. So let's think about that. So let's not hold on to these ideas of the precious perfect image, that you gain more than you lose by being vulnerable and real, that you enroll people by teaching them and inspiring them and showing them a little bit of how the sausage is made. Right. There are no secrets, really. So that's the jump. You're going to have to get from here to there, and the divide is you're going to have to understand that the new rules of engagement on, on social media is very different than what you learned. Okay, so over the next few weeks or months or whatever, you're going to see chapters of this story unfold as I work with Yvette to give her a digital makeover as well. And you'll see, and we'll see where this goes. So 10,000, what do you guys think? That's a good goal for a year, right? Yeah, we're going to do it. And you guys can follow along. I've already given Yvette some homework to do, and so we'll see how this plays out. What's that? I've been doing my homework. Are you? Okay. Of course. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. Okay. <laughs> I'm Art Center. I know how to do homework. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. Do you guys want to ask Yvette any questions? And then before we move on. Okay. Let's get the mic going. Hey, what's up, guys? So Hello. my big question is something you guys just talked about mm -hmm. is that uh, I've been struggling with is that you talk about being vulnerable and being real. But then also hear you, Chris, say that, like, you know, when you look at somebody's account and if it doesn't have a consistent look to it, yeah. that, you know what I mean, like, you don't follow it personally. So it's like, how is it that can you be, you know, real and be vulnerable, but you have to uphold this image on Instagram that, like, your feed needs to look a certain way for people to follow you? So that's the biggest thing that I struggle with is finding that balance of, like, where do you put yourself out there to really, you know, experiment and try things? Or where do you keep a consistent feed? Some people are looking for you, like to follow you for that same type of content. Well, what what I got my big takeaway with that from Chris because my feed I do a lot of kinds of work. I'm working on a cookbook right now. I shoot what I shoot really high end weddings. I shoot advertising and all kinds of stuff. And I shoot for myself. <coughs> and my Instagram feed looks really schizophrenic. <laughs> it really does. It's very unorganized. I've but seen it. It's true. I know. It's totally true. My website, and my websites are very organized things, right? And Instagram didn't feel organized to me, and I'm working on that. That's my next thing. But from my takeaway from you is that instant stuff and that sort of personal reach comes in your stories, right? Your, your portfolio is your feed. 
as your grid, sorry. But your stories tell your story, right? Yeah. So consistency. Let's talk about consistency and being authentic and trying things, right? I don't think those are mutually exclusive ideas. Mm -hmm. You can try things. Bonnie tries things all the time. I see her in her feed. And here's the beautiful thing. If it didn't work, you could delete it. <laughs> and what I'm always looking at is like, what does my community, what does my audience want from me? And I will just ask them. And I'll engage and I'll give them exactly what they want. So I thought sometimes it, you want to see more work or you want to see personal stories. And so I'm not there for me. I'm there for them. Okay? Let's talk about the consistency. The consistency is about an aesthetic editorial eye that you bring to it. It's about a tone of voice that you tell your story with. So one day, you don't want to be the raving, angry guy who's like, grind, grind, grind. And next day, it's like, oh, you know, I'm having a vulnerable moment. <laughs> it's like, who is this person? There's like kind of a split personality issue going on, okay? But you can try different things, and you're going to see it. Bonnie does it better than most people that I know, where she creates kind of like an editorialized magazine of her and her life and her viewpoint and her beliefs. It's pretty wonderful, and we'll get into that. So you'll see that there's room. And the general rule is the feed is quite precious, right? And you want to curate that, and it needs to line up in a certain aesthetic. But stories are more immediate. They're very te um, temporary, ephemeral, and they disappear. So if you want to explore your voice, use the stories. And that's what it's good for, because they kind of disappear. And people understand that. So all you OCD people, I cool myself in that group, post all your weird stuff on stories and see what happens. And if, they, if it goes bananas, maybe that's telling you a little bit about what your audience wants from you. Okay? Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank let's, you. let's do a couple more. I know hindsight is 2020. Um, I want to ask about the reaction to when you got the call. And mm -hmm. I've, I've been in the same place where it's like, yes, we will do it. No money, which Chris would probably just slap me. It's like, I would. Yeah. Oh, no, but I, but I, I straight was going to not be that. But <laughs> in, <laughs> in hindsight, do you think if you would have qualified the call similar to some of the videos you've done with Melinda, do you think you could have kind of entered in and showed kind of your, your ability to produce good work and then do it? Or was it just 50,000 or else you're not getting the gig? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They were looking for, and I don't, I don't know, uh, don't think that this is, um, I don't think this is what they do for every single job. This particular job, which may have been an Instagram forward job. I mean, it might have been a job that was going to just be a social media job. I don't even know that much yet, but what, or I won't ever, but, but for that particular job, and possibly for everybody, but definitely for that particular job, um, that was a requirement. Mm. And yeah. they looked at my work, we talked, fully able to do their job on every level but that. And so... Um, yeah, I want to address that a little bit. Yeah. No amount of ninja skill training yes. is going to save you from that outcome, no matter what. Because at the end of the day, what they cared about was not only did they hire the right photographer, but the photographer was going to give them that boost. And that's value add to them. Yes. And, and we talked about this. We don't blame anybody for making that decision. We might even make the same decisions of ourselves. Like okay. all things being equal, we have six photographers to pick from. We need the help. And we, we know that the, the landscape and advertising is changing. So our, sorry, all ad majors in this room. You're chasing down a dead hole. You really are. You're going down a dark, dark path. <laughs> advertising, it's done. Okay? And what we want is true authentic stories and we trust people and so when you become a brand ambassador and you speak about it in authentic ways that means a lot more to that person let's think about the media buy now my number's a little out of date here but amex used to spend half a billion dollars a year in media buy who here's watching tv nobody Where's that money going? So it needs to be redirected into the universe because they still have a marketing appetite that needs to be filled. So they'll spend it on Facebook, on Insta. They'll, they'll work with influencers. They'll do branded content. And if you're not playing that game, you're going to lose. You are going to lose. And this is a wonderful thing. I look at all this stuff as good news. The fall of one empire means the birth of another. And those that are smart, those that are willing, you play that game and you'll do really well for yourself. Right? Absolutely. And, and it's not the fault of a company or anything of the sort. You no, know? not and at all. I don't blame them one bit for that. Um, it's, it's just, it's, we talked about Annie Leibovitz before. Something between 
A and Annie Leibovitz, this whole train of, of exploiting lucky breaks and things like that, that was a game that, she, that made her become her. Of course, the work is there. But there's that game involved. Yeah. And there's a lot of rock photographers out there at the same time who were gunning for those jobs. And for some reason, she played that game better. You know, I keep going back to her because she's the icon. So, you right. know, but, but yeah, you can't blame the companies for that at all. Um, it's, but, but to have the opportunity to have the curtain lifted and know the big reason why you truly, really did lose this job, such amazing gift. It, 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 one of the greatest gifts of a career to know that. Yeah. Let's do one quick question and then we're going to move on and we're going to move on to bringing Bonnie on stage. Who, who wants it? Right there in front. See, I told you it's in the front. <laughs> I told you. Um, hi. I am just wondering if you have any experience with um, something that I'm finding happens a lot where I see people who I even know personally who might be in the same um, career field as me. We're trying to go to the same place. Um, but their pages have like 50,000 but you know that they're not doing anything and then you go reach out to them and say, hey, do you have any tips to offer? Like, um, how did you get from here to there? So like literally overnight, you just made your page and then they come back and say, oh, nothing, you know, I'm just posting and stuff. But you see, they only have like 150 posts. Is there any truth to that or do you experience that too? I'm not sure I totally understand the question here. You're saying you're suspicious Yes. Because somebody hasn't posted a lot and they have a lot of followers? Yes. Okay, let's talk about that. And then they say, oh, no, I'm not doing anything. I'm not paying for followers and nothing like mm. that. Okay, I'll tell you how you can, <laughs> how you can figure it out real quick, okay? Uh, the number of followers and likes and all this stuff, that's, like, those are vanity metrics. And, and I think Bonnie's going to talk about this a little bit, about are those true fans? Is that really an audience? Because I, I, I can tell from afar what happens. I do want to say this. There's a couple of things here. It could be that they're really good at doing something and they don't want to share. I would say remove them off your friends list. That's no friend of mine. Yeah. Number two is you don't know that if they've deleted or archived 450 images that didn't work. Yeah. People do that all the time. I tell people, clean up your freaking account. It's really messy and it's not pretty. Clean it up, okay? So the, the last thing is you buy followers and you can do it. There's lots of services that you can use and we can talk about them. But I really think... A thousand earned followers is better than a hundred thousand bots that you bought. That's it. And you can tell because the engagement is super, super low. And I see people who have 200,000 followers on Twitter and they post something and they get 16 likes or one retweet. And it's probably them retweeting themselves or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's really inauthentic and people don't want that. And when you see that, you're like, no, no brand ambassador is going to work with you. It's like, this is, this is not good. They don't want that. They want engagement. They want to know that who you have following you is real, okay? All right. I think that, can we save it for later? It's related. Oh, well, okay. I've seen someone who has like a lot of likes, but it's just like a dumb little meme, you know? And, and well, that's what gets a lot of likes. Yeah. Dumb sure. little memes. You do know that, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a guy, I saw this really funny meme, right? And it has like 200,000 likes on it, and the guy's account only has 2,400. So that's telling you something that these things don't always convert. And the, the filter that I usually use, and probably if you look at how you behave on social media too, right? You see something, it gets recommended, you go to the feed, and within a couple of swipes, you're like, this is not for me. You make the decision that fast. So just because you have one hit doesn't make you the Beatles. You have to be consistent, <laughs> right? And you have to deliver. It's like, and then I routinely unfollow people because I'm like, what is this garbage? I didn't sign up for this. I go back to her accounts like, what are you doing? Do you not know you're sending me in a different direction right now? So I just unfollow. Sorry, Grandma. <laughs> just, it's not, it's not like I'm just kidding. Guys, come on. I'm not that cold. <laughs> Maybe I am kidding. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, you guys. We'll continue this conversation we've got offline, right? Thank you. Okay.